Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I still have, uh, let's see, today is December 12th, 2020. I have, oh, I don't know, three more days of jail in YouTube. And uh, I don't know. Just a update. I got a two strikes. If I get one more strike on YouTube, they will delete the channel. And I've already got two. So evidently, uh, questioning the official narrative about uh, anything the you know who's are pushing up on us, well, it's not allowed. And pretty soon, Jesus will not be allowed either. Now, there's going to come a point where we are, the, the remnant believers, are going to be pushed out of the cities. And either you'll be killed or you will be in the wilderness. Revelation chapter 12. And there will come a time when you will have to do this to escape the mark of the beast in whatever form it is. So let me tell you some of the things that you're all, that you will need. Now the thing is, if the Lord doesn't provide, it's going to be extremely hard. I believe that there will come a time that the Lord will provide for his people just like he did in the wilderness on, at the, the first Passover. Uh, first Passover, they went into the wilderness where they wandered around for 40 years. Uh, the Lord supplied them with manna and with water. But there will probably come a time when we will have to leave before the time comes when that happens. But uh, two, two of the most important things that you could ever have in the wilderness would be a knife and a fire starter. And... This is going to be the knife part. Knives are considered an essential tool if you know anything about Norse culture, N-O-R-S-E. For example, uh, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, some people say Finland. Uh, I don't know. But especially uh, Sweden. There is a saying that a man without a knife is soon a man without a life. A knife is a very important, essential tool. I mean, it is just absolutely one of the most important things you could have. You could use a knife to build a shelter in the wilderness. Uh, you will use it to prepare food. And, of course, you know, cutting things is, you know, you, <laughs> you know, uh, what do you do with a steak? You know, you cut it up into bite-sized pieces, right? Makes it easier to eat. I don't know if we'll be eating steak in the wilderness, but, uh, you know. All right, let's go and take a look at the cheapest to the most expensive knife. The um, There's a uh, company in Sweden 
Now, Sweden makes excellent steel. The countries that make the best steel are, oh, I don't know, probably uh, Sheffield, England, uh, Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, and Japan. And uh, the United States is in that running, too. But those are the countries that make the best steel. There's a company called Mora Knife. Uh, they're also known by Frost. And they make a knife between $10 to $15 is just absolutely phenomenal quality for what you get. I, uh, you can, if you live in a dry environment, you could probably be happy with uh, carbon steel. But if you live in a uh, damp environment or if you're around water, perhaps you would want stainless steel. The Swiss have a type of steel called Sandvik, and that's what the uh, Moro knife, their stainless steel blades are. 15 bucks, four inch blade. Uh, you will not believe the quality and the sharpness of these knives. Uh, the sheaths are not very attractive. They're functional, but they're plastic. Uh, I don't know. If I had a choice and I was on an extreme budget, this is what I would buy. I would buy a Mora knife. They are extremely high quality for what they are. And, you know, some people want a $100, $200 knife. You don't need it. And what happens if you lose it? You know, I would rather have two or three Mora knives and then if you lost one or broke one, which... I've never heard of anybody breaking a Mora knife under normal circumstances, but uh, pretty good stuff. That is my suggestion. Anyways, Mora knife. All right, so number two. Perhaps you've heard of the Swiss Army knife. Uh, they are a, an extremely sharp, very functional knife. And they usually have other tools. I mean, you can get a Swiss Army knife, just like a tool kit, pocket tool kit. Of course, uh, I doubt you'll be using a lot of screwdrivers in the wilderness. Uh, but you never know. You know, it's never bad to have a punch or a... A leather punch or something like that for doing repairs you know nail file uh, they come with a toothpick they come with tweezers sometimes you know that is a very very useful thing to have and it is a high quality thing uh, it is a folding knife the Mora knife is a what they call a fixed blade and a folding knife just can't compare to a fixed blade knife for sturdiness and rugged ruggedness so you know your budget is going to dictate what you buy uh some of you already got some of these things laying around you know swiss army knife so all right um you know swiss army knife is uh, like i say really good quality for what you get and they come in all kinds of price groups. So, all right, the last knife I want to examine is what is called a K-bar. K-bar was the company, well, it, they've been bought up a few times, different companies, but uh, the name brand has lived on, but they were a official supplier of knives to the U.S. military during World War II. The Marines were issued knives, seven-inch blade, to, uh, I was in the Army, by the way, and the Boy Scouts, but for a military knife, anything less than about six and a half inches is just not considered military, you know. Seven inch blade is what they consider essential for 
dispatching an enemy to the next life, if you catch my drift. Uh, we're not looking to um, dispatch any people. Uh, you might have a run-in with an animal, of which a 7-inch blade would be extremely useful. But uh, in the Army in Europe, they were issued bayonets. But in the Pacific, they needed something more practical as a tool, and they were issued K-bar knives. Now, they come with a variety of handles and sheaths. You can get a stacked leather sheath. I mean, I'm sorry, you can get a leather sheath with a stacked leather handle, or you can get a what is called a kydex sheath. It's a type of plastic with a handle that is some type of uh, man-made, uh, I don't know what it is. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what it is. Uh, personally, I like leather, but if I was in a wet environment, I would go with the uh, synthetic uh, sheath and the synthetic handle. But uh, I don't know. I think the synthetic would probably outlast it. Now, if you were in the sun, the uh, synthetic sheath has nylon, and nylon breaks down in the sun very, very quickly. Uh, you know, if uh, these blades, yeah, uh, for example, the Swiss Army knives, you can get a Swiss Army knife from $20 to like $100. A K-bar is generally around $90 with the uh, synthetic sheath. You can get a knife a little cheaper with the leather, but uh, m you know, it's the Marines, all the Marines in the Pacific were issued these knives. And these guys swore by these knives with their lives. Yeah, they were, I don't know if the quality today is as good as it was back in World War II, but they were considered indestructible. I mean, as long as you didn't drive a tank over the knife, uh, you know, you would probably be good to go. It was a very, very handy thing. I mean, you could cut down branches with these things. I've done it. <laughs> so I've got a, I got a K bar. Very good quality. Uh, almost indestructible. I mean, they used them to dig holes with them, uh, you know, fillet a fish for cooking, uh, cut down tree branches to make like a, a shelter, shade from the sun or from the rain or from the wind. I mean, it's just a very, very useful thing. So I would, uh, you know, Morrow Knife, 10 to $15. Swiss Army from 20 to 100. And then the K bars are about 90. You know, and if you do get a synthetic sheath uh, and synthetic handle with a K bar, you can get a sheath, uh, a leather sheath, and throw it in your pack or whatever for another 12, 15. $15. And then if, you know, a sheath breaks, you got a spare. I mean, what does it weigh? Almost nothing, you know. So, uh, one of the other things that would be very, very important would be a way to start a fire. And that will be the next thing that I will cover. But they have a, uh, a thing called ferrocesium. From what I understand, it's a synthetic compound. I don't know what it's made out of. Matter of fact, I ought to look that up real quick. Well, I can't. I'm offline right now. I'll cover it in the next um, video. But somehow they make this synthetic compound. And when you strike, well, when you scrape a uh, hardened, piece of steel across it, it creates sparks. 
it's very, very similar to a flint on a lighter. You know, you flick the wheel and it sparks. Well, it's very similar to that, except for these sparks are much, much hotter and much, much larger. And um, some of these uh, ferrocesium rods are good for thousands of strikes. Yeah, we'll be covering fire making in the next video. So, all righty. Uh, you know, there's going to come a day when we can't live in the cities anymore. It's coming, people. I've spent the last few years warning the sheep. And uh, trust me, you're, these churchgoers that go to that watch TV preachers that believe the you know who's are the chosen people, the, the Antichrist, um, the pre trib rapture people, they're going to be your enemies. They are the enemies. For the most part in the near future you watch mark my words um, you know you may not believe it but God said that he would send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie God also said that he would deceive the false prophets and I will cover that in the next lesson. Or maybe I'll do it now. And oh, by the way, people, ask any Marine about a K-bar. And uh, he'll tell you what a K-bar is. I mean, if, you know, I, it's an expensive knife. But you know what? When you go out in the wilderness, I, that's what I want to have. I want to have a big honking knife. A uh, more knife is about four inches. Anything under three and a half inches is just not very practical. Three and a half to four inches is very good for a knife. The more a knife would be very good as a fish uh, for fish or an small animals. Um, K bar is more of a if you didn't have an axe, you could, or a hatchet, you could, you could use it for light um, work. You know, and if you want to cut down trees, uh, you could probably do it with it. But you know, that's abusing a knife. That's not what it was made for. Get an, get a hatchet. Oh, and by the way, if you want a hatchet, my suggestion would be get an est wing. E-S-T-W-I-N-G. Any of you people ever done uh, construction work, you probably know what an S-Wing hammer is. They're solid steel. They are unbelievable. I've owned a number of them. People steal those things. I mean, if, they, if, if you turn your back on a minute, it'll be gone. People steal them. I've had so many stolen from me. Um, but S-Wing makes uh, a hatchet and, uh, I, you know, you get an axe with a wooden handle, you could break that. I, I never heard of anybody breaking an S-Wing hammer and I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of experience with their hatchets. Uh, I have one, but uh, I'm telling you what, I, I don't think you could break it. I really don't. And if you were out in the wilderness, uh, you could use it as a hammer. Uh, one side is flat like a hammer and the other side is uh, sharp like an axe. Well, a hatchet. And it would make a tremendous weapon if, uh, against uh, an animal like, you know, a coyote or a mountain lion or I'd hate to try to use it against a bear, but you know, if that was all you had, um, all right, well, I've been yapping my jaws for 20 minutes. Uh, a machete also might be a useful thing, depending upon if you got, if you got hardwoods, you want a hatchet. 
If you got mostly vines and pines, well, machete'd probably be all right. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. Amen.